Hi, I'm Gene Benson. There always seems to be some confusion about maneuvering speed, how it changes with the load we're carrying, and how the engineers came up with maneuvering speed for a particular airplane in the first place. So we will take a quick look at all of that in this short video. Let's just quickly review the concept of maneuvering speed, designated as V sub A. It's not depicted on the airspeed indicator, but is most likely shown on a placard somewhere in sight of the pilot. You may have been taught that if you are flying at an airspeed slower than maneuvering speed, you are immune from suffering a structural failure. That turns out to not be totally true, but it is largely correct. We should slow to maneuvering speed or less when we encounter any significant turbulence or before doing any maneuvering that will stress the airplane. Let's begin by remembering that maneuvering speed is reduced when we are operating at less than our maximum allowable weight. So let's see how we can calculate our actual maneuvering speed for a particular flight. We will use an example of an airplane that has a published maneuvering speed, VA, of 110 knots. Our airplane has a maximum allowable weight of 3,100 pounds, but today we are operating at only 2,550 pounds. What is the VA for our flight? Here is the formula for the calculation. We divide our current weight by our maximum allowable weight and take the square root of that quotient. We then multiply the value by our published maneuvering speed. So for our example, we divide 2,550 by 3,100 to get a quotient of 0 0.82. We then take the square root of 0 0.82 and find that it is 0 0.90. Then we multiply our published maneuvering speed of 110 knots by the 0 0.90 to get our calculated maneuvering speed of 99 knots. Or, we can go a bit easier on the math and use a rule of thumb, which will be close enough. The rule of thumb is that for every 2% reduction in the aircraft weight below the maximum allowable weight, we should reduce our maneuvering speed by 1%. So, if our actual weight is, let's say, 20% below the maximum allowable weight, we should reduce our maneuvering speed by 10%. Where does maneuvering speed come from, anyway? Here is the VG diagram. It is for a specific airplane. The example here is from an FIA diagram and is generic for a utility category airplane. An airplane operating in the utility category must be able to withstand a positive load factor of 4.4. This could also be referred to as 4.4 G's and is the limit load factor. Positive load factors are what we encounter when we feel like we are being pushed down in our seats such as pulling out of a dive or when in a steep turn. The negative limit load factor for utility category airplanes is negative 1.76. Negative G's are what we feel when pushing the nose over aggressively. Exceeding the limit load factors when operating in excess of the maneuvering speed may result in permanent structural damage or even an in-flight breakup. The whole concept behind maneuvering speed is to provide us with a reference speed below which the airplane will stall before it is structurally damaged. Now the idea of a stall when in, let's say, instrument conditions at night and in turbulence isn't very appealing, but it beats having the airplane come apart. So if we are flying below maneuvering speed and we experience increased load factors, the airplane will stall before it is damaged. If we are faster than maneuvering speed and we exceed 4.4 Gs, the airplane might be permanently damaged. If we exceed the ultimate load factor when above maneuvering speed, the airplane may suffer a breakup. The VG diagram begins with the unaccelerated stalling speed. Unaccelerated would indicate a load factor of 1. Where the 1G line intersects the curve would indicate the stalling speed. Maneuvering speed is determined by entering at the 4.4G point and intersecting the curve. Dropping down to the airspeed line provides the maneuvering speed for positive load factors for the particular airplane operating in the utility category. Now we do the same thing, but for the negative limit load factor of 1.76, and determine that airspeed. The lower of the two values will be the maneuvering speed to use. 
remember that the maneuvering speed is not shown on the airspeed indicator. The VG diagram also shows where the color markings on the airspeed indicator come from. The upper limit of the green arc is maximum structural cruising speed. In this example, it is the airspeed above which a load factor less than negative 1.76 will cause damage. The red radio line, or never exceed speed, is where damage will occur regardless of the load factor. Please check out my website, genebenson.com, and my Facebook page at genebenson737. You can also follow me on Twitter. I am at gene underscore Benson. Thanks for watching.